Uh, trombone World, thank you for inviting me to this trombone hangout. Yes, I'm here in Graz. Graz is the second biggest city in Austria and I play the bass trombone in the orchestra from the Opera House. The Opera House is the same architect, Feldman Helmer, which he also did like, for instance, Zürich or Budapest and all these uh, buildings in the monarchy were built by Feldman and Helmer. And if you want, after the trombone session, we can make a small virtual tour uh, through our opera. Yes, my name is David. I play bass trombone here in the Opera in Graz, teach at the University of Music. And yes, I started, began to study, studying trombone with Carsten Swanberg because he was the former trombone teacher here at university. I think he's very famous internationally. Then I went to Vienna, studying with Dietmar Kübelberg from the Vienna Philharmonic, then changed to Hans Strecker bass trombone in the orchestra. I made some Erasmus with Stefan Schulz. I'm still very close with him and try to take lessons with him, sending my students to him. Yeah. And I was a few times also in the States, in, in New York, having lessons with all these great guys. And also in Chicago, where I had many lessons with Charlie Werner, I still try to be in contact with him. Last year was in Vienna. And yeah. I still try to learn from him and all the great trombone players and try to give my my things I learned from them to my students and yeah use it for my practice every day. I'm invited to talk about warm up and practice routine. This is what I want to do. I start with a simple exercise from Qigong. Hold on. All the stuff I don't need. Also my shoes, if it feels comfortable for you. You can uh, join me. Warm up your hand. Was hast du schon mal? If it feels comfortable, warm. Touch your pelvis. Explain first and then I let you do it. And when I'm breathing in, maybe close your eyes. When you're breathing in, go down, feel everybody from your body, go through your tiptoe, and breathing out is going up. And again, feel your pelvis. Okay, so now I, let's do it together. Warm up your hand. Put off your mobile phones. Everything you don't need, we just need one. One, this is, is you and the trombone for a beautiful, the most beautiful trombone sound. Touch it, breathe it, feel it, and start to get concentrated. Sure. If you do it a few times, you're starting to get into your personal world. Qigong, just Google it and watch some videos from the professional guys how they do it. Just make some simple exercises or yoga or whatever to get in your face, in your mind. Maybe afterwards, I take the spirometer. If you have it, use it. You see, you can change it. Sorry.
and hold it as long as possible. So you don't, you cannot imagine how much air you can take and yeah, you use it for your trombone. So the next exercise we can do together, we can do also without the spirometer. We take our hand and we listen to a big O sound and breathe it in for a very, very long time like on the spirometer. carefully to have very big O in the breathing in and when you breathe out try to have a really good line so there's no interruption you know like Robin Hood getting ready That's what we need for the next step. The next step is take the mouthpiece. I like to play in the mouthpiece some very simple notes because this shows me what I did before in my breathing exercises. I do a low C within the same like before. Make the most beautiful trombone sound. Let's do it together. Low C. There's nothing moving in your tongue. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go to the next. stable note. Listen to this. Oh, when you're breathing in, don't use any tongue. Give away your tongue. Tongue is just an instrument we use uh, later. Before, we just concentrate on your mind, on a, on a beautiful trombone sound. Continue with that.
just concentrate on the beautiful, relaxed trombone sound. concentrate on the road and oh. it goes on that and this is what we don't don't can use for a beautiful trombone sound. Yes, I do this mouthpiece over the range up and down just very simply long notes. Yeah. And take your horn. Layer O middle B flat. Without tongue, everything is without tongue. Put it on 70 and I explained it to you before because ah, we now have the acoustics get, getting back. <laughs> so I do breathing in for four beats. I count them one. One. Relaxed, you know, when we play some etude or some uh, creation or orchestral, etc. 
Usually we have really less time to breathe, so that exercise. And of, and of course, also bring together the two notes. So I show you once and then let's do it together. One. Everything is clear, let's do it together with a second position. So, the main thing is beautiful sound on one note and also on the next, get it together. Have a relaxed breathing, having time for this for four beats. And in the final, we have at least no time, but we still use the same relaxed breathing like we have before. And another thing I do in this exercise is to start with a few mezzo forte and then go in a forte so try how, how much I can do in forte and then I go back to piano, piano, pianissimo because we have to play all that in dynamics okay, let's do it together on the second position one <laughs>
and the slide always changes with the music. The rhythm shows you when to move your slide. Somebody in Chicago is always saying, based on one player, I say their own name. One. <laughs> Thank you. 
that's the relaxed breathing we have before in the Qigong and in the Spirometer. Now it gets harder. Put the metronome on 80. Try really to finish the note and get completely out of your air. I also like this game, doing this with the metronome, because it shows me if you still can play the same long phrase <laughs> like maybe one year ago or two years ago. If not, yeah, start running. And E flat. Don't forget to play in a good pew pew mezzo forte forte and piano pianissimo. No, that's the O and the pretty E flat. One. Ravel, Sherazad, you play piano pianissimo low E flat. So you have to, to control it. Here, the next is the C. C. natural, be nice to the tenor trombones, and now we also go down to really the low C, maybe do some flowing out exercise before, I love to do this 10 times exercise from Charlie, I show you, use it on the head, use different positions, for the fortissimo, beautiful sound, and make all the house, and get vibrating. 10 times, let's do it together. Start on the left. Big sound and full breathing. 10 times. Is the E. Ten times. Don't 
be nice to your neighbors. Let's continue the exercise. We do not um, two half notes and the four beats we do three times half beat. But the same rhythm. Starting with low B flat. One. Sorry. One.
you wow, for doing that low exercise together. The next exercise is going up. I think I made a mistake. I think this is lip slurs, something like 11. Now we do a variation from lip slurs, 25 series. It's just a, a batch of going up. I want to say something about it. I start with, let's say, F. And let's do Pisando before I want to say something about Pisando. If you do Pisando, F major, a better, very often we use to listen to. Never forget in Pisando what Stefan is saying in Pisando. The the, the luft, the air, is never doing some articulation. So the air is always really run through your instrument. So in Pisando, be completely relaxed and... We still have the metronome. The breathing device changed a little bit. I show you maybe before. I do Kisama first, and then I do legato and forte, and then I try to get back, you know, in all dynamics we have to use. One. <laughs>
what I mainly do in my starts to practice so if I, I want to continue afterwards with some Bordoni and Arban I just ask you all if you have some questions about that stuff we did before put your microphone on do you have some questions no everybody's happy cool thank you so we go on with a very simple Bordoni, Bordoni number three, I think nobody used the music. And I show you how I try to practice it. Use the metronome because, you know, move, move the slide with the rhythm, so that's the reason for the metronome. And I start to do it in, let's say, 10 o'clock, one o'clock lower. And I play it on the same notes to figure out how much energy I have. Wow. <laughs> Everybody is understanding the game. I play it on the same notes, forte, so I figure out how long I can play. Then I do it in a good gisando. In gisando, remember. This is not gisando. There is moving like in Qigong in a one way direction. Here and afterwards, I play it in legato, and then I get softer, 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 like doing, for instance, Schumann or whatever you want. So let's do it together. Tempo is still 80. Bordoni, Rochur, number 
three first trees and the last note is uh, I know it's a, it's a quarter note we do a half note now we get back to the old counting we have four reading two one and play as possible one <laughs> saying to us because I was in this group of Mala Youth Arrest and they always said you are craftsmen if you are played at trombone. Yes, we are craftsmen and this is really craftsman exercise. But we are I think we can afterwards use it in all the concertos and excerpts if we do it before and after. Let's go to the next phrase starting with F sharp. Start with the F sharp and one Chicago Symphony Orchestra and he told me if you practice the Valkyrie, the wide of the Valkyrie, play it with a CD recorder and every time getting from the beginning and again go to the end and again from the beginning. So I, if I compare it with that, I do it many times and every time I do it, I try to make it better. This note longer, this note more in tune, this note more beautiful with more beautiful sounds. So that's the possibility. If we repeat it, we can, in, in, in Latin, we say repetitio et legere, you know, learning and repeat it and, and, and learn from it. I think this, this is why I like to practice like that. So, again, Bodoni number three, and we do it bass clef one octave lower, starting from the beginning. One. <laughs>
yeah, if you're alone, try to remember record, listen back to it, half speed, relax for it, that means be natural. One. <laughs>
Who are you playing? So I made an error mistake in my counting. I'm so Okay, we have one more. Base class. Do access level. <coughs> Start from the beginning. Wow. and feel fresh air coming in your head from this low breathing just do it you know also just do tenor breath as written now and at the bones wake up one <laughs> Oh. 
now so close together, not like on the low range where we have so much to do and so much work. So let's finish the Bodoni with the last race. Start with A, last one. One. So let's make international Badoni number three. Let's go together. Sing it, enjoy it. And this beautiful house, may you have the, maybe the same beautiful surroundings. So enjoy it and make it what rating this house. Badoni number three, international Chimbone. One, two. <laughs> Sorry to talk so long and and continue and continue. So so I have a question for you. Do you do this uh, every day or do you have an abbreviated version if there is a day where you are busy? I do it every day. That's why it sounds so good. <laughs> I try to every, do it every day. I just have one problem. My girlfriend. Because maybe she's not happy every day for me to do it. But yeah, I really try. I try to do it every day. What's, sorry to ask you, because I also want to know it. What do you think about these breeding devices? Well, I use, yeah, I use them. I have a spirometer here. And then I also have this. I don't know what you call this. It's with the... Mm, I don't know where... Know the name? It's like when you... The, the ball... So yeah. So the ball will stay up when you breathe in and out. But I think they're very great. I, I use them a lot. Um, really useful. Yeah. And I think getting these really different variations makes you playing it so easy afterwards if you play it like, like it's written, you know. And if, if you do it on the Schumann 3 and, and, and on Bolero and on and Tuba Miro and on the everything, I think it makes everything very easy. Do you agree with me? If you want, I want to also talk a little bit about articulation. Okay, let's do the famous Arban. If you have the book f commented from Joe Alessi, it's, I think, page number th 37. I just wanted to say what I think what I like the most about all of your 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 whole routine is it seems very meditative what you do. It's okay. very relaxed and very calm and it's like I think this is a great aspect to have and I really appreciate this. So thank you for that. Thank you. Because I think this is what we need if it gets 
you know, special, sitting in the orchestra hall and everybody waiting for your don't know what. I think this is what we have to train, you know. Practice like you perform is the famous sentence Arnold Jacobs always saying. So really, never forget playing there, be relaxed and thinking that thousands of people watching you. Cool. So let's do a little bit of articulation. Sorry, the glass is from the wine, but the, <laughs> there's no wine, it's just water. We have a lot of famous wines in Graz, Styrian wine, because the area close to Graz looks like in Tuscany. So I can recommend you to come to Graz. I know a few of them were there because they were in the famous Ains uh, festival. So maybe you had a nice travel to the Südstermark, south of Styria. Yes, so travel get off, Abam on. What we have there is Maybe Jakob, you can make a screen. Well, I'll introduce you Jakob. He's my assistant and he's playing trombone since two years and he's doing a really great job starting. Were you late to play the trombone? How old were you? Uh, 20, 23? 23, something 23 like that. 24. So it's never too late <laughs> for a trombone. And this is the famous exercise we all know. From the trumpets we know from that tempo. What I want to tell you about this exercise is also if you see what uh, Mr. Alessis wrote. Move the tongue with the air, not the reverse. So if we have the same thinking we had before in the, in the legatos uh, stuff. And yeah. Let's show you my way of doing that. I like to do my notes always on the spirometer. But yes, I have another spirometer. Try to do is keep the bowl up so you know the air is getting through the nose. So let's simply use the 80 tempo. And it's another long travel in this simply one bar getting through the notes maybe it's the spirometer or also the mouthpiece I like to do it on the mouthpiece because you if you do it on the mouthpiece you really hear it directly if the note is there or is not there Especially if you do later in one octave lower, you hear everything. So I like the small way of getting uh, a result, how it sounds. Yeah, I do it in forte fortissimo Bruckner style. And then I go back to tenuto, staccato, staccatissimo in the end. You know, this is what we might need if a conductor saying playing like Azzaladra. Like a very short bassoon player, or imagine instrument you like. So this is what I'm doing with the Arban stuff, and I do the same with 
practicing la cazzolatra, playing, practicing creation, practicing saxe, practicing kokash and Grigoriev. I do the same way, yeah. Uh, like I do in the album, reading this all, in all this stuff. And the breathing is the same like before. So we don't have to change, it's good. So let's together, let's do together the first bar. So the beat is the 16th note. God is always saying, the slower, the better. One. <laughs> you play I think staccato, staccatissimo, I like, yes, still doing the same thing like in tenuto or in legato before, it's still this very quiet connection between these notes. So it's never Just air and one note getting into the next note. Super! So let's do the second bar, one octave lower. Same game. One. <laughs> Slow range, it shows you very direct. I'll show you. We have, we have something like that, the air is not doing the right job. Super pizzicato, like in the finale from Mala 6, or whatever you think about. Cool, so let's get the tempo faster. We now had bim, bom, bom, now we do bom, 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 we double the tempo. Go from the beginning, let's say to, as written, two bars. One. <laughs> Thank you. 
we go, let's, let's take it bar number five and do it down and up. Down. Maybe we make a finale boom, 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 boom. and do it again from the beginning. Let's find a tempo. Beam, bum, bum, beam, bum, bum, bum. So we are almost in the tempo. Everybody's coming about. Start from the beginning and as written and yeah, dry out. from this line two active two octaves lower remember relaxed breathing move slide with the rhythm and the beautiful note beautiful sound on every note and every note the best ever trombone sound you can do so let's do the last two bars from this line two octaves lower Beam, pom, pom, beam, pom, pom, beam, pom, pom. I count in two bars. One, two. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you for listening me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you, Jakob, for the big support. So now it's up to you. Do you have some questions? I I have a question. Yes, come in. So uh, it's it's one thing to it's one thing to do it for uh, for yourself and focus on the things that, that you need to focus on. Uh, but when you're working with a younger student, uh, there might be many issues that need to be addressed. Yeah. Which, uh, d is there a certain order or priority that you like to address those issues? Like, do you do the breathing first and, and, and then go for the sound? Or do you go, uh, do you change the tempo? Like, how do you approach it with students that, that really are just kind of, you know, uh, struggling in many ways? I know this, yeah. Yeah, I also try to get the breathing and the sound. And not a rhythm which is too complicated, you know? Just make a simply simply good sound and try to rem remember him about the breathing and give him many examples, you know? Like the Robin Hood making it ready and then going there. What is file in English? Arrow. Error, yeah, the errors of your time going there, you know, and give him a lot of examples how he can imagine the sound and also this line on the simple notes. And then after you feel, okay, I, he can do getting him more notes, you know, getting him more notes going together. Is this what? Uh, Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We have some more questions. Um, I'll ask one. First of all, do you hate tenor trombonists? But um, do you think <laughs> no, I have to play tenor trombone. <laughs> do you think it's important for tenor trombonists to work into that double octave register? I don't think this trombone has seen those pedals in two years, but um, my wife just yelled agreed from the next room. Um, uh, is it important to work down there? I know working down to a decent pedal F, but into the double pedal. Maybe at least to this, you know, tenor clef, two octaves lower. Because if you then go up and play in alto clef or tenor clef, I think how do you feel? Does it, doesn't it feel very easy? I had a five hour recording session yesterday, so nothing feels good. Um, okay. Well, I think it's very easy because you know, you learn to really take all the air which is possible to take. Yeah. Yeah. Some more questions. Uh, can you hear me? Matteo, hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just maybe wanted to tell something about uh, there are people playing with a lot of pressure and less pressure and you play with just without pressure. Maybe something you can you say about it if you have maybe students. I know younger people forced to tend to, to force the air out. Mm -hmm. And how to make this switch as fast as possible to this relaxed and no pressure at all. I mean, if you go in a very high register, you have to, to do something. It's not magic. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for someone who is struggling, who is a pressure player to go to this low pressure resonant sound playing. I think the most important way for younger students is to not to say too much, just play and you know, and then they can imagine and then they 
hopefully can try to follow just the sound, you know what I mean. If it gets complicated and it's a little bit check the thing we we try to describe all the nerves and all the systems maybe it gets complicated i think the most important thing is for young players wherever play for them in a beautiful relaxed sound and then maybe try to imagine and maybe try to t to to do the same what do you think about it here i think it's uh you know, I started also with Stefan Schulz a bit uh, in Dudekar, and it was complicated for me. I was already 20 something, and I was a slocker school, yeah. you know. You know, Dushan, Dushan is a lot, it's, he's a, quite a pressure player with a lot of pressure. Uh, and it's a beautiful sound. I, I like it also. I like also this kind of, of playing. It's, it's totally different. But I like it. But at that point, I wanted to change to this relaxed playing, to more bigger. The sound gets a bit bigger, darker, everything. And it's easier to play longer also if you're not, if you're a relaxed air player. And mm -hmm. maybe with young students, it's a bit easier than with old uh, donkeys, we say in my language. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it took me a lot of time to change, to go to this relaxed playing. And the positive thing, I, ke I kept both. So I can I can go back to this squeeze, to this uh, uh, small sound, and I go can do big sound. So I, I, I took profits of both. So, But it took me really a long, long time to do it. Yeah, this is what you say. I think the most important stuff is to be patient. This is, this is the word for young and old students. Be patient. And all these exercises we did, maybe they took a, a long time. I don't know what's the time now. It's, there's no sound that's the recording. It's uh, continuing, so we have to, some time. But you know, this exercises takes a lot of time. And I think this is what, what we need to get this sound and relaxed feeling. And then we play uh, Arban like in the end, it's so easy. And we have a fast tempo. And it's the same relaxed uh, doing like before. Can you agree with me? Yeah, yes, totally, totally. I just have to to keep an eye on my kids. They are destroying the garden of my mother-in-law. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I agree totally. It's just uh, you know, usually people want to get some success very fast, and at some point, it really takes time. Boys. Stop. <laughs> God. Some of them, it's, it's working, but you know, after some times, they get some problems. We, we notice these people, you know, they are worried. They come in and they are superstars, and everybody says, I so impressive they are playing, but you listen carefully, and some like in the legato, you can feel some, some, some difference. I have a question for you, David. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you use the, you've said, you said a couple times, you know, always trying to make it better, always trying to make the next one better. Um, mm -hmm. and I, and I agree. Uh, so just a, just a question for you. I'm curious. Do you like how you sound right now? I was not happy with my upper register because yeah, maybe it's very hot in the house and we're recording all week, uh, uh, opera. But you know, this is maybe an, an Ausrede. What is Ausrede? Uh, excuse. Excuse. <laughs> so it's no excuse. Yeah, still keep work, working on that. I was not happy with my upper register, really not happy. So tomorrow, the, focus on that. The, the reason I ask is because I think that many people believe uh, to always try to make it better. Um, but I think that there's a discre I, th I think the difference comes in is that some people like how they sound and they're trying to make it better. And some people just don't, they're front, like it, it doesn't sound good yet. They're, they're trying to, um, they're trying to get to a place where they, they feel like they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't know if you, I didn't know if you're, cause I think you sound amazing, but I didn't know if you are thinking 
uh, this is terrible and I need to keep practicing to get to this place that I want to go. Or if you generally feel satisfied, uh, but sometimes things don't happen the way you want them to. I, 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 I know that's complicated, but. There's also a point you have to say, I'm happy. I'm, there was some phrases, I'm happy. Yes, this is good, I think. And this is the motivation for tomorrow. There are a lot of points today which working and I'm happy about and some things are working not so, so good. So yeah, this is part of the game. Okay. But not only focus on that, on that part of the game, which is not working. It makes it too complicated. Be happy. Okay. Life goes on. Be happy with that and be happy what's working and, and the other thing. Okay, this is work, this is, this is life. Remember saying, don't call it a problem, call it work. A question on equipment. What, what, uh, what trombone are you playing? What size mouthpiece? I don't think about it. It's a Griego Taylor Zero. Stefan used it and I, I tried and I really like it. Diego, yeah, make it, and it's the model from Dave Dale, it's the size is zero, and it's a Edwards bass trombone tuning system from Blair Bollinger, and the Bertram, which is the music shop in um, Freiburg in uh, Germany, they sell this German bell, you see, it looks really German, it's German made, and this is what I use, and I like it, I like it very, very much, yeah, especially if we do some Brahms or Schumann, and we all play kind of that stuff. I really like it, but it's the same. It's not German like latch, but it's the same mm, relaxed breathing like on the usual Edwards. Thank you. Oh, yes. Well, this has just been so fantastic. It's been it's been wonderful to 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 really get an idea of your approach. And and I think we all understand, you know, much more clearly why you you sound the way you do. Uh, it, there's just there's some there's just some amazing things that you've put together, and you've done it in a really great way. And so we really appreciate you sharing with us today. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. If we finish now, we can also look in the in the in the main uh, public in the main house if you have, if you want. Sure. Yeah, uh, I I can stay on and, and kind of keep the the channel open. And if people have to go, they can go. But uh, I yeah. it looks like a beautiful house, and I think it'd be great to see. Thanks. Bye 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 bye. Austria. 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 Yeah. Yes, yes, this is the place yes. where we come come into the house. This is mainly the room where we have the chamber music concerts. And we have this beautiful foyer, people coming in in our opera house. Not at the moment, we are recording and streaming and hopefully very soon people are coming in again. Taking off their coats, have a drink, have a coffee, have a prosecco, have a steer and wine, and then come in there, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Or the harp is tuning, so we have to be silent. This is the opera house one. Yes. We are calling the opera called the Passagiere from a Polish composer called Weinberg. Very tragic, tragic Geschichte, story. About the Nazi regime. And it's not recorded, so we're doing that now, recording the passagier from the Polish composer Weinberg. Great possibility. Hopefully I will play it very soon for all the people. Uh, three paintings. One is Goethe's Faust. One is the 
Wilhelm Tell, it's the Apfelschuss, because Wilhelm Tell was the first piece played here in 1899. What's the opera, the drama from Schiller, and we also see the Swan from Lohengrin, because Lohengrin was one or two days afterwards, the first opera which was played here. Salome, for instance, by Richard Strauss was the first time to play in Austria. It's here. This is Mahler was listening. And then Schumann was listening. Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much. Have a nice regards from Graz in Austria. Hopefully see you here. If you come here, text me on Facebook or Instagram. You can meet if you have some questions for the lesson. Also, just text me on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, get in touch. Bye bye. Thank you, David. Bye bye.